happens at our birth with the SESTA-QVM. First of all, we have a PCT, Public Charitable Trust, an umbrella. There's 337 million little CQVs, SESTA-QV trusts, one for each of us, right, in this country. Every individual in the United States, and in most countries of the world, have a SESTA QV trust. And we have this CQV, and here's what happens, and this is incredibly important. You all know basic accounting? What is that? It's a balance sheet, right? A balance sheet. It's got debits and credits. You guys have been thinking you're the debtor. They keep telling us that, right? We're in debt. We're a debtor. We owe money on credit cards. We owe money on our houses. We owe money on everything. What happens at birth, though, and I'm just going to use the figures from 75 to now because it's round numbers. We were bonded for $1 million. What does that mean? That means the bank went to the International Monetary Fund, and the bank, on behalf of the public under your CUSIP number, borrowed from the International Monetary Fund $1 million in ones, fives, tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds, and they threw it out there into the general public. They distributed that $1 million to the bank for every person who's born. That's what they do. On the credit side, $1 million worth of United States Treasury bonds are issued. And they're sold. They're hypothecated. They're bundled. And they're sold on the stock exchange. And if we wanted to, I could pull up a website if we had internet access. And I could put in one of your CUSIP numbers. And I could show you the companies that are buying and selling you today. You have more than one CUSIP number, by the way. As we increase in value, I'll just put it that way, as we get better in our life, the more we join the military or get more college degrees, we get more and more CUSIP numbers. You are the credit. You are the creditor. They're making you believe you're also the debtor. And you are. You're both. This is your vessel. This is you. Okay? This is your labor. This is your worth. <clears throat> I got five college degrees. Every time I got an advanced degree in college, I got a new CUSIP number. So in the military, I got a new CUSIP number. All these CUSIP numbers are attached to my main birth number. Okay? This is in a bad spot. Anyway, let's stop here. It's a balance sheet, right? It's balanced. It's got a million on one side, a million on the other. This gets invested. It keeps growing and growing and growing. And let's just say it grows to $100 million. And by the way, that figure is low. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I've seen individuals worth $35 billion or more that didn't know they had a dime. Okay? It keeps growing and growing and growing. Our first 18 years of life, we're not spending anything. So nothing is going over here, our first 18 years. That's growing and growing and growing for 18 years. And it's being hypothecated and traded and They've done a good job of managing it. They really have. First 18 years, it's growing and growing and growing. You're not spending anything. You're not adding anything to the debit side. Then you go get a job and you get married and you go out and you buy a house. I'm just going to use numbers. And the numbers themselves don't matter. It's the concept. Okay. You buy a car or two. You buy some utilities or two over your lifetime, some medical bills, some food, whatever. They keep track of it all through your tax returns, your credit card, your bank statements. Banking is all tied into the IMF the Federal Reserve. We've got a big buildings of bean counters called the Department of Fiscal Services, and they, those accountants just keep track of everything. Everybody's life. And this all starts to add up on the debit side. And this just keeps growing and growing and growing on the investment side. At some point in time, you die, and it goes through probate. They take some of this, and let's just say over your lifetime you've spent, I'm going to round it off to $10 million. So they subtract $10 million out of your investment, and they pay off all this, and it becomes a zero balance. They even pay back the initial loan to the International Monetary Fund, plus interest. That was a loan from a foreign entity, by the way, <laughs> to the Public Charitable Trust. And they pay it back. The balance is zero. Now this has, let's just say for this discussion, has $90 million left in it. What happens to it? The SESTA QV Trust lives on in perpetuity forever. Everyone who has ever died since 1933 is currently funding government. 
This money gets reinvested. They can't take this. But the balance must stay the same forever. But if it keeps earning, they just sweep it off the top. And it funds government. It's called off-book funds. In the states, it's GSA. And in the federal government, it's CQV. And it continues to fund government. Why do you think they don't care if they spend $3 trillion on foreign entities? Because it's not their money. It came out of your trusts. It's not part of taxes. In fact, if you took the entire federal budget, how much is derived from taxes and tariffs? If you call up the Department of Fiscal Services and you send a FOIA request, and you ask them, who is the largest contributor to the federal budget? The Department of Justice, to the tune of $1 trillion a day, is taken out of our SESTA QV trusts or our court systems every day, a $1 trillion. That's more in 25 days than our entire gross domestic product in a year in 25 days. They don't have to disclose the CQV. See, I had to prove this in federal court to get to talk about it. So, a big portion of this comes out of this before we die. Every time you have a court case, the case is a CUSIP number, the case number. The court clerk is the banker. 